Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on this most holy night, when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life, the Church invites her children throughout the world to come together in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of the Lord. We remember his death and resurrection by hearing his word and celebrating his mysteries confident that we shall share his victory over death and live with him forever in God. A reading from the 14th chapter of the book of Exodus, beginning at the 15th verse. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. You lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and the sea turned into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord and the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord, and believed in the Lord, and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. Rejoice, heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels, exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of your King. Christ has conquered, glory fills you. Darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, O Mother Church, Exult in glory, the risen Saviour shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all 
God's people. My dearest friends, standing with me in this holy light, join me in asking God for mercy, that he may give his unworthy minister grace to sing his Easter praises. The Lord be with you. us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right that with full hearts and minds and voices we should praise the unseen God, the all-powerful Father, and his only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For Christ has ransomed us with his blood, and paid for us the price of Adam's sin, to our eternal Father. This is our, our sober feast, when Christ the true Lamb is slain, whose blood consecrates the homes of all believers. This is the night when first you saved our fathers, you freed the people of Israel from their slavery, and led them dry shod through the sea. This is the night when the pillar of fire destroyed the darkness of sin. This is the night when Christians everywhere washed clean of sin and freed from all defilement are restored to grace and grow together in holiness. This is the night when Jesus Christ broke the chains of death and rose triumphant from the grave. What good would life have been to us had Christ not come as our Redeemer? Father, how wonderful your care for us, how boundless your merciful love. To ransom a slave you gave away your son. Oh, oh happy fault, O oh, necessary sin of Adam, which gained for us so great a redeemer. Most blessed of all nights, chosen by God to see Christ rising from the dead. Of this night, Scripture says, the night will be as clear as day, it will become my light, my joy. The power of this holy night dispels all evil, washes guilt away, restores lost innocence, brings mourners joy. It casts out hatred, brings us peace, and humbles earthly pride. Night truly blessed, when heaven is wedded to earth, and man is reconciled with God. Therefore, heavenly Father, in the joy of his sight, receive a morning sacrifice of praise, your church's solemn offering. 
Accept this Easter candle, a flame divided but undimmed, a pillar of fire that glows to the honour of God. Let it mingle with the light of heaven and continue bravely burning to dispel the darkness of this night. May the morning star, which never sets, find this flame still burning. Christ, that morning star, who came back from the dead and shed his peace for love for all mankind. Your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ in glory. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour 
glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Amen. A reading from the sixth chapter of the letter to the Romans, beginning at the third verse. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy 
and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. At every turn, our liturgy this morning reminds us we are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. The phrase, which will no doubt be drawn on by preachers up and down the nation this morning, was used by Pope John Paul II, by, who was paraphrasing the teaching of St. Augustine, and he prefaced it with the words, Do not abandon yourselves to despair. This Easter dawn dawns in extraordinary circumstances, with thousands of people across the world struggling with sickness, hospitalisation and bereavement. Anxiety, uncertainty, even despair, stalk the inhabitants of every nation, rich and poor, powerful and powerless, as we contemplate the tragic and the terrifying outcomes of this coronavirus outbreak. Many of us may identify with the misery of the disciples as they stole to the tomb that first Easter morning, bereft and fearful. There will also be those among us who weep with Mary Magdalene at the loss of friends and loved ones, those left alone with their grief. Yet somehow Christians are drawn together this morning to unite in that joyful shout of praise, Alleluia, praise the Lord. Are we ignoring or negating the very real suffering of those around us? Are we placing our trust in an empty story? Or are we giving thanks and praise that in our cry, Christ is risen, we can find hope and comfort in our suffering as we experience together the fact that God has brought light out of darkness, joy out of pain. The resurrection of Christ from the dead lies at the very heart of Christian teaching. It is the very foundation of our faith. The story of Holy Week in which we have shared over the past few days is a story which embraces in the deepest way possible suffering, loss, betrayal, pain and grief but which ultimately leads to the promise that all things will be made new in Christ, that all the trials of earth will be transformed into the joy of heaven. The eternal hope which we celebrate today brings reassurance and comfort even to those who are sick or approaching the ends of their lives, or to those who are unable to sit beside them pray fervently for them in the depths of their hearts. We are an Easter people. We do not need to abandon ourselves to despair because we are held in the love and tenderness of a God who will bring us all to feast with Christ at his table in heaven. When we cry out, Alleluia, praise the Lord, we are praising him for his eternal faithfulness to us, for his promises of hope and transformation, for his love and self-sacrifice in stretching out his arms for us on the cross so that we might be able to witness and to experience the joy and hope of Easter Day. 
we see around us or through our windows, the trees laden with blossom, the flowers and the buds manifesting the promise of hope. God, who appointed the seasons, has given us this glimpse every year of new life bursting forth from the cold and dark of winter, filling our hearts with joyful anticipation at a new beginning. In the same way at this time, we are shown Christ bursting from the tomb, bringing with him the promise that the darkness of death is not the end, but a transformative new beginning. Eventually, after this current period of limitation and loneliness, we will be released once again to experience the joys of physical closeness and warmth, of meeting together with friends and family, and of once again worshipping God in his church. We will experience a different sense of new life, perhaps one in which we have become more aware of the many gifts we have previously taken for granted. Many have told me how much you have missed our being able to come together to praise God. And we know that the whole church is very aware of the strangeness of so many Christians unable to make their Easter communion in person. And yet I have found myself and heard from others of the power and joy found in making a spiritual communion. And I hope and pray that in this Eucharist, set amidst the spring signs of new life, you may be able to share with us in that mystery and holy joy of Easter. The priest celebrates the Eucharist in these circumstances on behalf of each member of the body of Christ, but in the full knowledge that it is your prayers and your worship which form the church into Christ's living and active body. St. Augustine, in talking about the meaning of the word Alleluia, praise the Lord, exhorted Christians to live out their Alleluias in their lives. See that your praise comes from your whole being, he said. In other words, see that you praise God not with your lips and voices alone, but with your minds, your lives, and all your actions. This is a time when our actions matter. We have walked, and in many ways we continue to walk, the sacrificial way of the cross with Christ in our isolation, helping to keep others safe and helping them practically in their hour of need. We keep vigil, as we did on Maundy Thursday, with those who face the fear of death. We grieve like the disciples on Good Friday for those we have lost. And yet today, we can join in the shout of praise for the eternal hope which sustains us and will set us free. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess with me the faith of the Church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Mother of the who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and 
the life everlasting. Amen. In joy and hope, let us pray to the Father. that our risen Saviour may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That isolated and persecuted churches and all who work amongst the poor, the needy and the suffering may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That God may grant us humility to serve one another in Christian love as we witness the many who follow Christ in serving others today in compassion and self-sacrifice. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That by his power, war, famine and sickness may cease through all the world. That his people may use the gifts he has given to bring in peace and justice and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak and the dying to comfort and strengthen them. We remember before him especially today all those affected by COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer that according to his promises, all who have died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised at the last day. We hold before him this Easter, Masuku, John Hogarth Clee, Tony De Bono, Jennifer Pinney, Christine Wattlesworth, Evangelia Brown, and Elizabeth Morange. Grant them eternal rest, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That God may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, so that he may bear wit we may bear witness to his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you and also with you. Hallelujah. 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 Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah.
resurrection power through Jesus Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the powers of creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection 
until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come again. again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live for ever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Draw near with faith. Receive in your hearts the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. 
let us pray. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We at St Mary Abbot's wish you a very happy Easter, an Easter of reflection and love in the knowledge of God's love for us. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share your Easter faith. Amen. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you and everyone you love, this Easter day and always. Amen. Amen. With the risen life of Christ within you, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.